Hello, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. I don't know if you watched my uh, space plane test to show you how it can take off and land back on a runway, but here we have a different flavor. Um, we're actually, I want to show you the same space plane on a rocket edge. So this is what we have. That's the airplane we just launched from the runway and full of fuel, which is was a mistake, but we demonstrated that it was possible. It really flew like a flying pig. If it was empty, it would have flown like a hummingbird, but no, it was full, so it flew like a pig with wings, and uh, we were prepared for it and we knew it was coming and we knew what to do and I explained a little bit of that how to monitor three things simultaneously to stay ahead of the game so you keep yourself out of trouble <clears throat> alright so let's let's just just jump right into this shall we um, I'm not sure if I have one or two Kerbals loaded preferably one if I have two then the, uh, failure is not an option good I have one so at this point, if I get into any trouble, I can go get into my capsule well, from my inline cockpit. Looks I'm already there for launch. And I can get in my, uh, my uh, space plane cockpit and get out of my space capsule. So this gives me a little bit of a room and uh, different, different uh, viewing places. Kind of like if I had a lander can and otherwise so um, what we're gonna do is basically put this plane into orbit and let's just start sorry I have to turn my volume down on my other speaker I'm on my microphone so. now I've got this channeled through my program so I'm not hearing game sound so the little audio cues that um, the uh, simulation software has provided for us I can't hear so what I do is I watch the emotion of my Kerbal knot now Jeb's a little special he's, he's fearless so the other Kerbals will shake in fear and look concerned but what happens is he looks really excited so I use his excited face for concern other Kerbals look concerned he gets excited it's funny anyway you, you, you learn to love Jeb when you when you play them all because uh, it, it's just it's interesting he's, he's what we call a badass but you can't use that term in school to your teachers or with your parents it, it means um, has a strong constitution fearless he's, he's the every, everyone's everything for being a, an astronaut alright so I look at my distance to uh, it's almost there to 70 so I'm just going to give it a little bit of gas Fire that off and get away from that. Okay, now. I don't want to go much over 70, so I'm just trying to take the free ride up and maintain a little bit of... I don't even know. Um, I'm trying to maintain that... Um, I guess it's... Uh, I'm trying not to lose speed, so I've got a little, little bit of fuel running. And I'm still going up at quite a rate, even though my no nose is pointed down. I'm traveling up. I can look at my vertical speed. I'm at a thousand meters per second, which is just hauling. Um, look it up on the line. Bullets don't travel half that fast. So, actually, I'm not sure what a bullet travels. It's about 700 miles per hour. Um, I should know in meters per second. So, let me go ahead and punch my gas. Um, now I've increased my fuel. And what I'm trying to achieve is 2250 for the first check. That's 2,250 meters per second. I'm also trying to keep the uh, apoapsis in front of me. See, I'm 32 seconds to the peak. And when I hit 30, I'm going full gas. And then if this 30 starts to pull away from me, then I will cut my gas back off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and raise my azimuth a little bit that's going to get me into the 
seventy thousand. Okay, it now my app my time to apogee or apoapsis was going backward. I mean, going yes towards uh, away from zero. And what I primarily want to try to do is hit twenty two fifty zero and somewhere between seventy and eighty five all at the same time. It, 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 it doesn't happen like that. But see, this number's counting down. 23, 22, this number's going up. Well, let me take you to the map and show you what's going on there. So we have this nice parabola arc like this, but we're, we're going to crash into the planet right here. So as we approach our apoapsis mark, I can get gas. And look, I, I, I hold it still or lock it up. Now it's moving away from me, so I'm going to take the gas off and let it move towards me. Now you can see I'm approaching the 2250. So let's just put it on 2250 and see, see where we're at. Bam, 2250. So I want to show you what's happening. It looks like we're now having orbit around the planet, but we're not quite to 70, so we need to get that up to 70. 70. Uh, 70,000 meters. Bam. There we are. 72. 70. It's not a perfect concentric orbit, but that can be adjusted. Um, I can pull my backside down and my front side forward. And make those more concentric. Even though that's a really good orbit, I just... I'm trying to show the technique of lifting this up, pulling that one down. We pull the apoapsis to us, put a little ahead of us, go back to our positive rate, and then I can set this on 72247. Probably not so precise, but I could if I went and adjusted my engine. Let's go ahead and look at that thrust value. So I can take this thrust value, I'm going to turn my gimbal lock, and take the main throttle and turn it down to like 10% of what it was before. So we're dialing it way back. It's a, like a manual governor. Let's just leave it on 11, that's fine. And then now my engine, when I push the gas, isn't going to give me as much thrust, but what I have is a greater level of precision. So... Um, as we approach this 2019, 18, 17, 16. A lot of times if I give it gas, it gets away from me. But if I turn this thrust down, and see my thrust is way down, it still affects me quite a bit. Anyway, I'm looking for 72247 or something close to that. So as I get closer to this, 6, 5, 4, All right, seven two five four seven two four six. I'll take that. We're within looks like eight eight meters of concentricity. Now, in a real world, after a few hundred orbits, you're going to get into a thing called orbital decay, where your altitude will transpose, meaning you'll get these numbers will even out and then you'll actually start to decay into the orbit. I think the space shuttle has to blast its thrusters, maybe, I don't know how often, but it, it has to make a minor adjustment to stop or, orbital decay. You know, it's just, psh, just a little shot. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't take a lot, but it needs to be done. And uh, things even out. You know, it's like when you take a string of boing, boing, hovers in the middle so it kind of does that it and it does that in a lot of stuff like when we fly the airplane and we're kind of trying to find its level that way when we're orbiting it's trying to find its what now now that a term that we can think about is called harmonics and that's the vibrations of the universe and how we cause them and are affected by them um, it's amazing and then of course there's light and then there's the, the the ones we actually use. And light has physical properties that, that um, are very interesting. And then there's, uh, you know, the, what we deal with, mass, 
motion and uh, force. Is that when an indestructible force collides with an immovable object? What is that? I anyway, it's an impossible state in physics. It's, it's just like a, it's a way for people to say, what are you going to do then? <laughs> it's kind of a, a, what happens when? And then they take your physics formula and they take both ends of the spectrum and they make them collide. And you're like, what? You know, an indestructible, an immovable object meets an indestructible force in motion. You know, okay. So you don't want to know what really happens just for science fiction people out there. It's the end of the universe. <laughs> it's, you're done. It's the new Big Bang. So anyway, that's what happens. The Milky Way is born. So anyway, these idiots that want to say this stuff, I especially hate it when they do it in sports. Like they think there's something trying to put physics into their sports analogies. Of matriculating down the field. You know, that dude didn't even know what matriculate meant. It, he didn't even use it properly. But yet, and someone thinks it's so damn cute, they just keep running the, the video. Anyway. Um... Ignorance, it's our battle. Um, wisdom is the consequence, and we can make a choice to learn physics, flying, arrow principles. It, it's all a conscious choice, and it's not out of the realm of even stupid people. Okay, so if you feel stupid, or uh, maybe you feel like you're not old enough to be smart yet, <laughs> it's okay. It's not hard. You just have to learn. Basically, the hard thing is uh, watching three things at the same time. But it's kind of like walking and chewing gum. You know, you try it the first time, you might trip over your own feet or swallow your gum. But after you do it a couple times, man, you're just walking and chewing like like and thinking. And maybe even doing something else now because it just becomes second nature and it's a matter of just doing it. And uh, it's not difficult at all. And that's my whole principle and point of these videos, other than to entertain my relatives after I'm dead and they want to see what I look like. <laughs> but the whole point of this video is to tell people that this type of stuff, physics, aero principles, orbital mechanics, let's go look at my ship Why we're here. Oh, nice little sunrise. Um, orbital mechanics, um arrow principles it's all very basic and you just have to know some words you have to know uh what the words mean like the concept behind them and then um once you learn those two things with a little practice and exposure and a uh, little more education you get a thing called a contextual perspective which means now you understand it um, in context to the verbiage created, the words we created, the ideas behind it, and the application of. Now, with this, you should be able to teach people what you have learned. And that's what you need to teach people. And uh, I, I can stick a caveman on a crop duster and he may succeed. But he's not going to know how to talk about it with any of us because he just learned and he, he may be made up for. You know, my thingy majigger and my dooley bob, and I pull this and that moves, and then when that moves, this does this. And, you know, he, you just can't talk, or, or people can't understand, um, unless you have like visual symbolism, models, maps. Um, it's all real cool. So, you know, this, this is kind of our evolution where we have a computer program that shows us a map, a model. And we can preform and behave in the world of physics. So, um, anyway, that's putting my space plane into near Kerbin orbit. And uh, why we're here, before we go, we've got sun. Do I have a... Uh, let me go ahead and put I pushed the F2 to get rid of all that stuff so we could just see the beauty of it. And I love this game. It's like, get your stuff set up and enjoy the beauty of it all. Let me push my angle button. Okay, so now this feels a little more like we're flying over a planet. Um, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and raise my solar panels. I should have these on it. 
and I've got these things built into the wings. So you might as well use your, your wing volume to, to conceal your equipment. You can see it's inside the wing. I've highlighted it. It's in there. And it's about as thick as a wing. And then I also have a panel here. So that's what this looks like in a near Kerbin orbit. You can say near Earth orbit, but that only applies to uh, Earth. And anytime you say geo, um, it only applies to Earth. So actually the correct term may be near planetary orbit. Um, everything's Earth centric. Even our measurement of gravity is one is the gravitational pull on Earth. See the little one mark right here in the middle of the green? That's an Earth measurement. So I don't know why we're so arrogant that we want to measure the universe's gravity based on our planet's specifications. But we do because that's our origin. So we will change that someday. Just like we have Greenwich Mean Time. So we have a, a, an official time for the planet, but each of us have our own time. <laughs> so we use G Greenwich Mean Time, which is in Great Britain. And... Uh, um, it's the official time of the world in 12 hours opposite, which would be, that's the official beginning of the time, daily time, the official end of the daily time, of course, would be the full circle back. But the opposite of it is what we call Fiji time. We have 24 time zones on Earth, so they're 12 hours apart. So if you know your time zone plus or minus um, GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, then... Um, you can talk time with people from other countries. And this is important in international business. And uh, when you're a pilot, um, especially a space pilot, you're hitting 24 time zones in 40 minutes. Um, I, I would be flying over time zones here where I'm at now. It's bam, there's a time zone. Bam, there's a time zone. Bam, there's a time zone. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so... Um, you know, space, it's really important in space to use that time. Anyway, I'm kind of proud of my simple design. And sometimes, uh, you know, what do they say? Keep it simple and stupid and everything will succeed. Um, that's the thing where people start overthinking. And, uh, okay, that'll give you a headache. Let me change that. My goodness. All right. So this is normally in orbit. I put it like this so my planet's to the left of me or to the right. It's like flying a wall against a wall. And then you can put your solar panels out. But, yeah, I'm really happy with this rocket. I think if I could do anything better, it looks like I've got a little bit of gas, I would put a port here and then leave this gas tank up here so other craft can come up and basically utilize its fuel. All right, so I've got 294 in those, and I got a, about 70 there and another 45 there. So about 300 units of fuel up here, which is quite a bit. Um, see, I, I could refill if I had a, a cone on this. Okay, so if I had a docking port, instead of a parachute and I put a docking port here I could go burn all my gas off and then come back to this tank and fill it back up so that's I have in here what I have here anyway I'm gonna call this the end of the video that's 19 minutes and we spent quite a bit of time talking about almost nothing so as always have a great day hope you got something from this I always get something just making them anyway if nothing else we get better and continuously improve all the time Never forget the debriefing. That's uh, what we do wrong, what we do right, and what could we do to be better next time. Very simple concept. And uh, before that, you have uh, mission planning and execution of mission. Um, uh, planning, preparation, execution. We have a process of the mission experience. And then we have the end of the mission, and we go to... Um, debriefing, which is what we did right, what we did wrong, and how can we do it better 
it should be a very simple process. It's an exchange of information with objective listeners and more experiences to um, help us get better all the time. Um, can be used used against you. So giving a debriefing in an official setting is kind of like a deposition in a court. You always have to be on your toes and proper. Otherwise, it can be used against you. Anything you said can be used against you. I will, I, just to close, uh, the British Miranda rights, I heard him the other day, uh, you have the right to remain silent, but failure to make a statement may harm your defense in the future. <laughs> Little different than the USA Miranda. I don't, they probably don't even call it Miranda. But anyway, may or may not, I don't know. That's an interesting one to look up. But um, We do it a little different in America, but I thought it was really cool. It's like, yeah, you got this, but, you know, a good man can go ahead and just tell us what's going on. <laughs> anyway, as always, thank you for watching Kerbal Space Program and me at Pastex and Kerbal 1.8.1. You have a great holiday. Thank you.